Hey folks, hope you're all having a great day today. This is gonna be a fast SketchUp video and the keyword there is fast because I believe if you watch somebody work fast and efficient on anything, then you will pick up on those fast and efficient techniques. If it's too fast for you, then slow down the video on YouTube or simply pause and rewind. Uh, but if you watch a video that is extremely slow and something is being taught to you in a slow way, then you're going to pick up on those slow techniques and use it, use the software pretty slow. So um, I'm just going to make a bench that is going to match a table that I made last year. So mahogany and maple, specifically ambrosia maple. And I do have some dimension restrictions. So I always recommend building inside some dimension restrictions, a boundary box when you're designing furniture in SketchUp. So I do know uh, my sizes are for rectangle from the origin, dragging in this direction. The dimensions in the lower right-hand corner of the screen say the first one is the longer of the two. So 24 comma 13 enter, that's my size, P4 push pull, 18 enter, that is my height. And to simply zoom in to everything on the screen, shift Z. Spacebar, click and delete every face except the bottom face. And that's because L4 line, I'm gonna draw a diagonal. And if I, if I deleted it first, if I was to just delete this and then draw the, the diagonal, it's just gonna make it again. So no, no sense in deleting it first. Spacebar, click, delete, delete. Now I have my boundary box as well as a line that has the perfect center of the project, which is really cool for rotating stuff uh, for symmetry. Spacebar, triple click, G4 component, enter. Now at, at any stage, I can press H for hide, U for unhide. I recommend you set up those keyboard shortcuts in window preferences, shortcuts, type in hide and assign the keyboard shortcut H. Press the plus button. It'll assign it down there. I've already got that one there. And then unhide all, assign it to you. And then one last thing, the uh, X-ray view style or face style, I assigned it to I simply because I recognize X-ray as invisible. I for invisible, you can see through the faces. Um, those three I recommend you set up keyboard shortcuts for. Uh, and I'll use them here in this design. So the first thing we can do, first component we can add is the legs are for rectangle from here to here, and then type in 1.5 comma 1.5 enter, P4 push pull all the way up to the top so it constrains to my 18 inch height, spacebar, triple click, G for component, enter. The reason why you wanna make a component and not a group is so that when you make copies, all of the components will update accordingly. I don't necessarily add uh, wood species textures as I'm modeling, but, I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it for this video. So I'll add maple and M for move. Control brings up copy from this corner over here to this corner. Now, as you can see, I'm constraining to the red axis and I want to right click and say flip along the components red. So now whatever I do to the inside face over here is gonna be uh, done to the inside face over here. We already have one selected. So let's hold shift and click on this other one. M for move control brings up copy from this back corner. Now we're constraining to the, or we're, we're dragging along the green axis. If I hold shift, you'll see that it gets highlighted. And that means I'm gonna constrain to the green axis and drop off lined up with this back line. And we, we moved on the green axis. So now let's right click and say flip along the green direction. Now, if I double click out of this part for P, for push-pull, any one of these inside faces will automatically update on all four of these component copies. It's gonna be really handy when I do the joinery. Next up, we can go ahead and add, let's see, the front rails and the top slats. This is, this is gonna be a little bit interesting because I do want, I think I want the top of the legs to be exposed, so they need to stay up at the height of the, the seating height. I think I do anyway. And I want these slats to be inset a little bit. So let's just go ahead and let's see, R for rectangle. We're gonna draw on this green plane and we will say the first dimension is the longer of the two. So let's press two comma 0.75 enter. That's the size of my slat. Now I've got this, this tool download that downloaded, this extension called 101 bit tools. I'll press about so you can pause it and read that if you'd like. Uh, but you can download this extension for free in the extension warehouse. And it has a fillet, which is adding a radius to two edges. So if I click on this, 
and it activates the tool, I can click this edge, click this edge. The dialog box says what size fillet. I want a quarter inch fillet. So I'll press enter. And there we go. I'll continue to do this, enter, continue to do this. It saves a little time from drawing circles, moving them into place, deleting what you don't need. So I'm going to have a two inch by three quarter inch slat and I'll radius all four of the long edges. P4 push pull, and I'll push this all the way back to the back edge of the project. Spacebar, triple click, G for component, enter. From here, I'm gonna drop uh, African mahogany on that. And right off the bat, the grain direction, does that look appropriate? I think these are in the wrong direction. So I can right click and say, Let's see, change axis. Now I'm getting a little too technical here. That doesn't necessarily, none of this really matters as far as the grain orientation. But I basically want to swap or rotate the green and red 90 degrees. So I think that'll do it right there. And there's not really a change at all. So I'll just stop, quit while I'm ahead right there. I'm gonna grab this and I want a half inch spacing from right here, M for move, let's space it off, 0.5, enter. And I want to space all of these with a half inch spacing as well. So M for move, control brings up copy, and I'm gonna drag in this direction and I'm gonna type the width of the slat, which is two, plus the half inch, so 2.5, enter. And then I'll press X10 to multiply that by 10. That's more than what we need. Let's see. I've got the option of, all right, so I'm going to reduce the length of this bench. I don't need it exactly 24 inches. That's the constraint that I need. So I'm gonna click and delete these, grab these over here, M4 move, and I'll grab this point, hold shift to constrain to the red axis, drop it off right there, and then move it backwards by 0.5. So now it actually is symmetrical. Let's go ahead and double click this. Use a window to select everything on this side, M for move, and readjust our boundary box. So now we are indeed perfectly symmetrical uh, with this center point anyway. That's pretty cool. Now I need to R for rectangle from this inside face to this inside face. The dimensions in the lower right say that the first one is the shorter of the two, which is my height. And I know that I am constrained at 2.25 comma enter. My height is constrained at two and a quarter inch due to the material that I have. So let's grab this M4 move and I want this to be, let's go to the bottom over here and let's go up by 0.25 inches enter. So I want to have notches cut in these rails that matches the radius of the round over on the slats. I think that's a pretty interesting look and I want to, I've done it in a previous project, I want to continue it into this. So now I can copy this, copy the, uh, the, the shape of the slat onto this model space by space bar, triple click to select everything, right click and say intersect faces with the model. And now I have, see what I got? I got all of this in model space. So if I grab all of these and H for hide, you'll see what I mean. I transferred the shape of that to this. So with that, with everything else being hidden, hide, hide, I can go ahead and select that, delete, 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 delete. And P4 push pull, I'll push this that direction, 0.75 inches, enter, spacebar, triple click, G for component, enter. I will drop this soft maple material on it. And in this case, yeah, that's the grain is going in the wrong direction. I don't necessarily have to change it, but that's going to bug me. So I'll change axis. And I think all I need to do is, let's see, rotate. I have pretty good spatial awareness, but this always drives me nuts trying to change the axis. What I need to do is rotate the blue and red plane 90 degrees. So green stays where it's at, rotate the blue and red plane. Didn't do it again, right. So green stays where it's at. <laughs> How do I do this? Green stays where it's at. I'm 
I'm gonna get it right one of these times. Oh my, okay, I got it. Don't ask me what I did. Rotated the, uh, changed the axis there just so I can see it properly or see it uh, as it will be cut out. So that's pretty cool. And let's go ahead and draw the short rail over here on the side. R for rectangle from here over to here. Again, two and a quarter inch is my uh, height restrictions. So let's go with 2.25 comma enter to modify just the first dimension. P4 push pull, let's push this in 0.75 inches, enter. Spacebar, triple click, G for components, enter, drop this material on it once again. And oh goodness, I gotta change axis again. Right click, change axis. And we are going to, yeah, I don't know. I'm just clicking around and luckily it worked. M for move and th I, this side rail, I don't know exactly this design just yet. I'm thinking I'm going to try it sitting down a little bit from this one. Now I need to center them on the legs. So I'm going to grab this midpoint of this leg, holding shift once the red axis is highlighted and drop it off on this midpoint over here. Same with this one. It's a little bit, it'll be a little easier if I go to the bottom, it's just so I can see it. M for move, grab this midpoint and holding shift to constrain to this green axis after it is selected right there. Now with this one and actually, you know what? I'm gonna add a strip of mahogany to the bottom of these. I, I, I've done that previously and uh, it was, it looks pretty good. So actually, just to <laughs> just to keep my axis in the same direction, M for move control brings up copy. I'm going to copy one down here, right click and say make unique. I'm going to add African mahogany to it and I can edit this one now. So T for tape measure, I'm only going to make this 0.25 inches thick. I'll grab this bottom face by using a window and not a crossing. P for push pull, I'll push it up to here. I'll grab this front face and I'll pull it out by... Uh, one eighth of an inch to have one eighth of an inch of a reveal. So now it's a nice little piece of mahogany. I can grab that Q for rotate, press up to constrain to the blue axis from this corner, rotating it around 90 degrees, press control to make it a copy, type in 90, enter M for move. And here's where the invisible command works pretty good. I for invisible. Now I can M for move this outside corner right here to this inside corner that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to see. I for invisible to turn that off. Right click, say make unique, space bar, double click to edit this part, grab that face, P for push pull over to here. Now I have the side rails. Eh, I don't know if I like this or not. Hmm. Nevertheless, I'm gonna grab this, hold shift, grab that with a crossing. And let's press Q for rotate from this midpoint right here. And we'll rotate them all the way around, pressing control to bring up copy. And there we go. Now we have everything on this other side. You see, I was, let me go ahead and grab this and hide it. I was, see, I was going for a little bit of a, almost like a James Krenov look with the opposite height or uh, different height front and side rails. But I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm feeling that. Also, I'm not sure if I'm feeling this top of the leg being uh, just flat like that. So let's go ahead and do something interesting with this leg. I'll probably round it over. It's kind of hard to round over in SketchUp. So easiest thing to do is just draw a cross around here or X and then select these outside lines, holding shift to select multiples, M for move, grab it here, hold up, or press up on the keypad to constrain to the blue axis and you can see what we're doing here. I'm just gonna drop it down one quarter of an inch and it updated all the legs. That makes it a little bit more interesting. I, I doubt I'll do um, a straight line like that, straight chamfer all the way around. I'll probably round that off to, to maintain this round theme throughout the project. I just don't like these. Huh. What if I continue these all the way off the bench and bring this up? I think I'll do that. So let's back up. Um, let's go ahead and chop the legs off at the bottom of these. Keep clicking too many buttons. 
All right, so now let's grab this, and once again, let's use a window to only select these. By the way, if you don't know window versus a crossing, if you click and drag from the left to the right, you'll get a solid dotted line, or a solid boundary box. That is a window. Everything that is 100% inside this window will be selected. If you drag from right to left, it's a crossing. Anything that crosses the boundary or is 100% inside will be selected. So you can use that in your, in your favor by using a window to only select these horizontal lines. All right, we're going to grab those. M for move, control brings up copy. Let's grab it from here, constraining to this edge. Hold shift to constrain to that edge and drop it off right down here at the bottom of these slats. Now use, let's press Y to get rid of everything else. Spacebar, use a crossing to select everything on top and delete it. And that'll delete this top face too. So we look down inside of it, right? That's easily fixable by pressing L for line to just draw, draw one of the lines. Once again, it fills in that face. So now we need to modify this piece. Let's double click to edit that part. Press Y to, uh, yeah, let's press Y to only view this. L for line. Select this over to here, P4 push pull, and let's push all this off, grab this and delete it. And you'll see on this side, I gotta do the same thing. L4 line from here to here, P4 push pull, let's push this off, grab that, delete it. This is too long for the spacing now. So what I need to do is determine how much overhang I want on this side. Once again, I'm not constrained to the entire length of 24. Uh, what am I at now? I'm at 23 and a half. So if I let's start on this side, let's grab a window to select all of this M for move. We're going to move from this point, hold shift to constrain to the red. We're going to drop it off right at the bottom of this radius. Now we can double click to edit this rail and uh, press Y for unhide everything else while you're editing. And I, th I think that might be another keyboard shortcut. I'm gonna grab this face, P4 push pull. And as I start to push it in, I will press Y once again. And I think it's right here at the end. Yep, right here at the end. Yeah. So that's that. I'll go ahead and do this same thing over here. Actually, I think this is gonna make it too narrow. D for dimension, that's another keyboard shortcut from this side over here. 19, I do want to add one more slat. So let's let's do this. Y, let's grab all of this geometry. M for move, control brings up copy. And we will copy from here to here. Another perfect spacing. L for line, actually grab this. P for push pull, pull this out to here. L for line from here to here. Delete this little line right there. Go to this other side, L4 line from here to here and delete this other line right there. So now we just modified our length. So we have a slat right in the middle. Is that right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one on either side, four. Oh, this is getting confusing a little bit, but hopefully it'll all make sense once I'm done moving stuff around. So let's grab all of this. M for move from here, hold shift to constrain to red. We'll drop it off right there. Grab another one of these. M for move control brings up copy from here to here. And now that is our new spacing. Let's go ahead and move this into place. Like so. Let's move both of these into place like so. And double click to edit these. Y to... Uh, unhide the rest of the model. P for push pull from here to this other face over here. Move this once again. I just completely changed up the design. And if I hide these, you'll kind of see how it's all going to be assembled. That's pretty cool, actually, I think. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Unhide. I don't need this boundary box anymore, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it, actually. I'm not sticking to those dimensions anyway. What am I at now? Uh, D for dimension, 21 inches, that's fine. But like I said, these can now be moved to the top. M for move from here to here, the bottom side. 
They are a different height, so I need to adjust spacing, but I think I want to do one thing before I adjust the uh, width of this. And that is I want to, I want to actually increase this indent and also round over this top face right here. That's going to be easiest to accomplish by simply adding something to the top and removing the distance from the bottom. So let's double click to edit this part. Y to hide everything else. So when this piece is done, yeah, I want these, these insets to be further down. Then I'll run it through the router table to round over these faces as well. The easiest way to do that is L4 line. Let's draw this up in this direction, 0.25 inches, enter. Go to this direction, hold shift to constrain to the red and drop it off right there and then drop it off right there. Now let's go up to this fillet tool and from this face to this face, quarter inch, enter this face to this face, quarter inch, enter P4 push pull. And I'll push it over to here, L4 line and draw this once again to get that face back. So now if I click to get out, you'll see what I'm talking about, right? So we're adding more height or deepening this cut, whichever way you want to look at it. And then we are also rounding this over. Now I don't think I can do that with the panto router. Just ran into a dilemma there. Hmm. Let's see if I'm doing this right. Half inch. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. Simply because cutting this on the hybrid panto router. And I'll go ahead and model it. If it doesn't work when I make it, that's fine. But in order to copy this over to all of these, super simple. Use a crossing to select that. M for move. Control brings up copy from this corner to this corner. Times 6. Times 7. Just pressing X6. Enter. X7. Enter. That updated all the way across. Quick and easy. I really like that look a heck of a lot better. So it looks like they're sunk into the piece. I really like that look. You know what? I made no. All right, I'm I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done changing stuff. So now, remember, I only have two and a quarter inch uh, material height to work with, so I can edit this part once again. And T4 tape measure, and I can go in the green direction. 2.25 inches. Enter. This gives me a total height constrainment down here. P4 push pull down here to this line. Now I can delete the guideline, delete it. So now my total height is my height restriction of my material, two and a quarter inch. Move this and this M4 move in the blue direction, constrained to that point right there. So now I know my total height over here, and just to make things match, I'm going to cut this piece Y to remove, uh, to show everything else. I'm going to cut that piece to the same height as the other and move this into place. And this M4 move from here to here. Shift Z to back out with my view. And that's pretty cool, right? I need to add, I really like the way that that looks, even extend it off the leg. I need to add the joinery. I don't need to, but I'm going to. Uh, so let's click this hide it. I'm just going to draw it in place. I know, first off, I want to draw a diagonal line. I'll use the protractor. So it's a guideline from this corner here, 45 degrees. That way, whatever I do over here, if it touches this diagonal, that means it's going to interfere when I make it over here. Meaning if I make this piece sticking off into this, this quadrant or this, this half of the material, then I know if I make that joint on this side, it's going to touch over there. Let's see, I know that uh, the geometry dovetail is one half of an inch at its widest base. It's a half inch wide dovetail bit that I'm going to be using, and it is a eight to one ratio. So just for the sake of drawing that really quick, that's, let's go with T for tape measure, uh, 0.5 inches enter, and I'm gonna grab another tape measure constraining to the midpoint right here. And I want a half inch width, so 0.25 in this direction, 0.25 in that direction, L4 line. Ooh, that's gonna be dead nuts on it. So I need to go less than that. So what was this, one half of an inch? Let's go 7 16ths. So T for tape measure, 
7 divided by 1 6 enter that's the one we will go with L4 line and this is our half of an inch right here and we'll use the protractor to say from here to here starting in this direction going like so 8 semicolon 1 8 to 1 ratio whoops I guess it's 1 to 8 in this orientation there we go 1 to 8 I'll repeat it over here 1 semicolon 8 and that's the exact shape of the dovetail right and I drew over a line and it confused me so there's the shape of the dovetail. I can delete all of these guidelines. I don't need them anymore. And I want to add this shape to both of these pieces and I want to subtract it from this piece. So let's double click that at this part. L4 line, grab this here, 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 and here. Press Y to only look at that. Grab this and I need to put it on both sides. So M4 move, control brings up copy and we will copy it all the way off off in a space. You can't leave it in, in here because it'll interfere when we rotate it. So leave it off in a space, right click and say flip along. We drug it along the blue. So let's flip it along the blue. Now we can grab this extra piece from this midpoint and drop it off on this midpoint. P4 push pull, push it all the way down to here. And what we do to the other one side, we can duplicate over here by simply double clicking push pull. If it'll select this face, double click all the way down there. Go to the bottom. It's completely unnecessary, but that line's not necessary, so I can delete it. And that line is not necessary. I can delete it. So we added a dovetail to this front piece. It's going to be a sliding dovetail connection. And we need to grab this uh, geometry, Q for rotate, and rotate it 90 degrees. M for move. Let's th we're just using this as, as tracing it out, right? So we're going to put it on this midpoint. Spacebar, double click to edit this. Press Y to get back everything else. L4 line. Let's trace it off really quick. And Y to remove everything else. Grab this once again. M for move. Control brings up copy. Copy it over to here. Right click. Flip it along the direction it was, which is the green. M for move. This midpoint down to here. P for push pull from here to there. Go over to here. P for push pull. Double click. Grab this line. We don't longer. We do, we don't necessarily need that. Delete it. Grab that, delete it, and delete it. Now for the mortises on this. Actually, you know what? This is our first little uh, template we want by. We can delete it. We no longer need it. Go to the edit the legs, press Y, and L for line to trace this off once again. Trace it off once again, and I went the wrong direction with that, but that's okay. Let's see, P4 push pull, let's grab this face, push it down to this edge, grab this face, push it down to that edge. Now we have a true sliding dovetail modeled up in SketchUp, and this line right here you're seeing is actually the termination of this radius, so I can't delete it. But if I press U for unhide, that will unhide my seat slats hmm I think I want a little bit more of an overhang here right so I don't like this one being flush that's gonna bug me so maybe I need to and, and I can't yeah I can you know what I can increase the length of these because my tabletop is 14 inches front to back so this will be 13 and a half. So P for push pull, let's go and out another 0.25 inches, enter. Go to this side, out another 0.25 inches, enter. Spacebar, click to get out. So now we're overhanging a quarter inch from this piece, but a full half inch from this piece. Is that right? Half inch, D for dimension, from here to here, 5 eighths of an inch. Is that right? Oh yeah, we're sent, I'm sorry, we're centering the rail on, on these pieces. All right. Too much back and forth. A couple little details. Essentially, this is all I need. I can, that's more than what I need. I can go out to the shop and make it from here. But a couple things that I want to do to make it a little bit more finalized. I want to add a taper to the legs because the legs just look, uh, look too structural, not elegant, right? So I want to add a taper to the inside two faces only. So I can select this one over here because I see these two inside faces. Hold shift to select just those two. M for move, control brings up copy. And I'll go up, um, 13, enter, 14, enter, 15, 
Enter. No, 14 is better. 14.5. 14 and a half inches. That's where the taper will terminate. So I can grab this face, M for move, pushing it into the green direction. It completely exaggerated. Uh, one inch. That's, that's too much. 0.75. So half of the thickness there. That's fine. Grab this little face, M for move, push it in the same 0.75. Enter. Spacebar. Click to get out. I like that. Makes it look a little, you know, a little bit lighter, a little bit more elegant on the on the uh, inside faces there. And just to check how the screws will look, I'm going to add screws here. Now, another plugin that I really like, but this one is a paid plugin. You don't necessarily have to buy it, but it is really handy. It's called, <laughs> and that's not where you can see it. <laughs> if you go to extensions, woodworks, W-U-D, W-O-R-X, it is the drill plugin really handy but the drill preferences the hole diameter eighth of an inch that's fine hole depth three quarters of an inch that's fine because that's the same thickness of these slats countersunk hole that's fine so all of my specifications are fine so let's double click to edit one of these slats t for tape measure one of these edges i want to hold shift constrain to that axis and i want to drop it off on this midpoint if i can find it here Huh. There we go. Snap to that midpoint. So now the screws will be perfectly in line with this rail. And how far in do we want to be? 0 0.25, 0 0.375. Let's go with 0.375 from the end of this radius, 0.375. And what is, let's, let's do one more over here on this side uh, in line with this midpoint, if I can find it. I don't know why it's not letting me snap to this midpoint. Anyway, what was the dimension over here? I can just do that way. D for dimension. It is exactly one inch in. Super easy. One inch in. And now I can add my screws at these intersections. Just boop, boop. Isn't that pretty cool? I like this plugin. And there we go. So add my screws, let's delete all of these guidelines so the model doesn't get messy. And that's gonna look pretty cool. I think so anyway. Half inch spacing in between the slats. The slats sit down into recesses, hide this, and the construction is sliding dovetails, which is completely hidden by this slat right there. But that's okay. The sliding dovetails is actually mainly there to make assembly so much easier. Not a whole lot easier, but you know what I'm saying. Easier, stronger, all that good stuff. Yeah, I like it. I think this is what I'm going to go with. And we'll call this model complete. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it for this video. You guys take care. Have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video.